Hi, Carl here for Pro V T V. I'm here in London at JJ Media Studios for our open day on the C200. I'm joined by Brett Danton. How, How are, are you? you? Good. I'm excellent. How are you? I'm great. I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> but <laughs> apart from that, absolutely brilliant. So, what are we doing here today? Uh, so, we've just screened the uh, Jaguar C200 commercial mm. that we shot. Which is beautiful, by the way. Thank you very much. Uh, so we did that uh, oh, about three months ago in Queenstown, New Zealand. Terrible place to have to <laughs> shoot. Shocking. So Real was, hardship. Real hardship. Spent three weeks there, so no, I was very lucky. Really lucky. Um, and now, yeah, so it's been screened around and uh, there's quite an extensive behind the scenes. And basically we've just been doing a talk and a breakdown of what we really went through on the commercial. You know, rather than everybody think it's just a bunch of pretty pictures. Um, went through what the camera went through, what we went through what everybody went through in two days to make it all happen. It's great to get a little bit of a behind the scenes look. Yeah, I mean, I think people think, you know, you just sort of rock up and you shoot. So, you know, it, it, I think it's really interesting. And also as well, all the problems that you have, you know, we, don't, we had weather, we had fog, we had rain, you know, we had everything thrown. Everyone has problems regardless yeah, of the budget. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it doesn't matter what, you know, I don't think how big your budget is, you're going to have a driver along the way. So, you know, it was great to have all of those, you know, be able to show all of that. and sort of people appreciate what you actually went through to get the finished image in the end, so yeah. And it's not just a screening, of course, we've got some kit here to play with as yes. well. I think we've got yeah. a C700, yep, we've got right. two C300 Mark IIs yep. and two C200s. Right. And I, that's I mean, great. I've, I've pretty much shot with all of them. Mm. The 700 is my main go-to camera. Okay. Um, well, I've been using 700 probably all year, so I've got, we've got, uh, I've got one client now we predominantly shoot on 700. Because you did the launch film, right? Yeah, I did the launch film for the 700, which we strapped it to the front of helicopters and chased range drivers up the side of mountains, which was, again, another one, another terrible thing to have to do. Um, yeah, so, you know, and on this, we took 700s with us because I wasn't convinced the 200 would be able to do everything we wanted to do, but it did everything. Uh, there's a lot of green screen at the end, which I thought we'd end up using the 700. Um, but what I sort of originally thought, you know, in my mind is that the 700 and 200, you know, with the same sensor, uh, become the perfect pair of cameras. So, you know, you've got, especially if you're, into, say, doing a drama or even TVC, whatever, but, you know, you've got your main A camera as a 700, which has every output going under the sun, every record media. And then you've got a 200 as a fast action camera, gimbal, drone, and you've got you know, two lots of images that match together really well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, we found they cut and graded perfectly. You the image is the same. Really. Yeah, the image is the same pretty much, yeah. You couldn't tell the difference. What's nice with the 200, obviously you've got the compressed, or they call it cinema raw light. So, you know, you've got a file which is a lot smaller at the end of the day. It doesn't give you quite as much push and pulling in the grade as the 700. The raw from the 700? Yeah, yeah the raw from the 700. I mean, but there again, you're dealing with 128 gigs of 16 minutes, suppose it's two terabytes. Mm -hmm. So massive data difference. Um, but in terms of the two cameras working together, really nice combination. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I saw the 200, I thought it was the perfect B camera for the 700 or the lead camera, one or the other. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, if you want to do something for cinema, mm -hmm. it's a perfect entry cinema camera. Um, I'd, it'd be nice this to see indie film shot on it, absolutely. to be honest with it. I reckon it'd be perfect for that, yeah. yeah, absolutely perfect for that. This is a really good example, this commercial, because, I mean, as, as you said, you took the C7, it must have been quite nerve-wracking for you, using an unreleased camera, oh, yeah. you weren't sure what it was going to be. But it, it, it was the third time that I've done it for Canon with an unreleased mm. camera. So I've, I, the first time I, the first time we did it, which is uh, the C300 Mark II, I was, that I was nervous on. There's a bit uh, more trust now. Yeah, so I've got a bit of trust now on it. But again, you know, as I said, we, we, you know, I hadn't really had any time with the camera. Mm. Um, this one, at least I knew what it looked like. <laughs> with the C300 Mark II, when we did that, we didn't even know what it looked like. Mm. I didn't know what the, we didn't even know what the specs of the camera were. <laughs> it literally turned up the morning of the shoot in a brown paper bag. So we've moved on. C700 was the same. That turned up in a brown paper bag almost before the shoot. This one actually turned up in a box. So we've moved wow. on quite well. But again, we had a pre-release camera. Um, and the firmware... The, when we got to play, play with it pre-shoot, uh, a lot of the functions didn't work on it. So it was literally got the firmware got uploaded the day before we shot. So mm. and I got on the plane to New Zealand that night. So yeah. How much C seven hundred footage were you expecting to use versus how much? To be honest, did you I, was, I was expecting about half. Mm. That's kind of where my brain was at. Because it's a weird situation. Because it, it was a. This isn't just for Canon, is it? This this is a Jaguar. This commercial. is actually a Jaguar commercial. It's, mm. I think it's running at the moment. It's definitely on air in about four countries at the moment. Mm. Uh, 
Jaguar have used it is online at the moment a lot, um, and it's been translated in a couple of other languages. So no, it's it's it's, it's a live commercial. It's not no. It's mm. it was actually a written brief by the ad agency that I shoot for. It shows the trust in the camera and how happy you were well, with the exactly, images, really, doesn't exactly. it? Exactly, yeah, exactly. Um, and that was the thing is, you know, the, this allowed us to do something, you know, we, we could... Uh, to be honest with you, I think if we... I mean, for a start, we couldn't have flown the C700. No. So, you know, you couldn't have put that on a drone. Not on a drone, no, no. You, no. You did in the launch film, didn't we you? Did, that no, was well, that was a helicopter. We had to use a helicopter. I believe the 700 might fly on the shot over drone. But then that's about the size of a helicopter. Chunky anyway. drone. Yeah. It's a chunky drone. So, um, you know, we were looking for something of C700 quality that we could do all, do all of the effects that we wanted to do, and that the 200 allowed us to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, we, we had two of them, so we were lucky. Uh, we had one mounted permanently in a, in a Movi setup. So, that we thought we were going to use gimbal. I've gone a bit off gimbals at the moment. I've, okay. Uh, look, I think What's they're fantastic. Uh, no, I think they're great, but I'm just sort of. You almost get a bit fed up with smooth footage. I want to see something want with a bit a, more grittiness. I want to back see a bit of bump back into it. So we went back on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. We had it rigged for a gimbal, and we had a gimbal there. We didn't actually use the gimbal. Um, so the gimbal we used on the bottom of the drone. So you had the C700 and you used it for one shot. You had a gimbal there, which you didn't. I know. Was there lot, any other kit you brought? A lot of wasted stuff. No, a lot of wasted <laughs> stuff. No, to be honest, the C700, we did shoot a lot of stuff with it. Okay. There's only one shot that made the commercial, and that was only because I liked the look of the shot and I was operating it. So I'm a, <laughs> it takes you a bit, bit biased. I've got to put my own stuff in it. No, um, so no. The t I mean, the t so we what we did was we did back up, especially on the green screen stuff. We covered everything on the C seven hundred, thinking we'd need to use it, um, especially. And then you've seen the light that we went through. Mm. You know, the few other bits and pieces. It ended up being a multi comp shot. Mm. As soon as I realised that was going to be a comp shot, I thought that's it. It's going to be seven hundred, and uh, no, fine. We didn't use it. So, but as a result, what it's done is it's proved that the two cameras work together perfectly. Mm. Yeah. So that, that for me is a really good test. Absolutely. Um, so how do you how do you think it will fit into your your life going forward as a shooter? For me, uh, I, I would use it quite a bit. To be honest with you, I definitely use it on commercial work, especially fast action stuff. Um, Especially on drone stuff, I mean, yeah, 100% on drone because the quality of the drone, you've, you've seen what the files look like. And it's nice here we've had a 4K projector, which I think has really shown off what the image was, will do. So I would certainly use it for that. Um, for me, the two go-to cameras now would be 700 and a 200. Uh, you know, we, we use the 700 a lot on another job I do with the Technocrane. Mm -hmm. That... I'd stay with the C700 because it's got so many different outputs mm -hmm. and we shut oh, it's that. It's the ergonomics, it's, it's a completely different. Yeah, product, uh, but it? it's also all the different outputs. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I, I can look at a, a, a monitor in, LUT, uh, in log, I can send a LUT to the client who, believe you me, needs to see a LUT, <laughs> you know. So all of those different bits and pieces, you know. So I can do all of that and, and I can also as well on that camera, I can multi-record and lots of stuff. So for that, for commercial stuff, 700, you know, for speed and quickness, yeah, I'll still stick with that. But, you know, if I need to go for drones or gimbals or probably even, you know, a lot of shoulder running around, I'll be back on the 200. I think as a combination of cameras, I think they're fantastic, especially with the viewfinder, being able to use it across both of them as well. Do you see, do you see yourself leaving the C700 at home for some sort of, I don't know, some travel type thing? Oh, I think if I had, if I had to travel, uh, you know, and, and put it on a backpack or something like that, mm. yeah, I'd take the 200 any day of the week because, mm. um, you know, the 700 needs so much more. You know, and you've got all the batteries and stuff that go with the 700. It's a lot of image for the size of camera. That it it's is. a massive amount. I mean, to me, you know, it, it, it's a true cinema camera, um, you know, and, and it, it's, um, you know, if you, if you want to project... I, th I mean, in this day and age, to be able to shoot something on a camera that size with cinema lenses, on a, and I'm a cinema lens lover, you know, shoot with those lenses, then turn around and I showed it tonight, edit it and grade on my laptop, then produce a DCP finish that we've then projected on a 4K barcode at a cinema. Can you imagine doing that five years ago? Four years ago. You know, I remember the first time I got a DCP package, it was almost like voodoo and sort of, you know, it cost us thousands of pounds and that wasn't that long ago and, you know, you had to knock on the door three times, you know, do a secret handshake. That's what it felt like to get to get a DCP. But now, you know, I... We've I come a long way. Yeah, we've come a long way. And to be able to do that off a camera and know that it's sat in the right colour space and all of that cuffs as well, P3, you know... Um, and it's great, I've got a P3 monitor at home so I can you know, judge that as well. So to be able to take all of that, and I'm a little control freak, so you know, that's opened up a whole new world for me. That, that um, uh, cinema raw light 
works on a laptop really well. Um, I just use an external RAID and then, yeah. yep, watch it all back, play it all back in real time. It's, you know, it works fine. Yeah. Cool. I reckon we should get back to the group where there's food and wine, but thank wine you very much. Wine the important thing. Wine, exactly. <laughs> back to the wine. Cool. Great. All right, thank you guys for watching. Um, if you want to know more about the cameras and stuff like that, head over to Provi's website where it's all the information is there and all the payment information is there if you want to buy one. Um, and huge thank you to JJ Media for hosting this event. It's great space. It's really, right, really, yeah, good. really good. Nice. Yeah, cool. Really good. Thanks for watching. <laughs>